The Lakers have had an A-plus offseason, which you can tell by looking at LeBron's Instagram story by itself. This was D Flo. The Lakers may have flopped in round three to the mile high, but they've been the 2023 offseason's evident winner, and it's not even close. From first signing both Vincent and Prince, which we broke down in a separate video, to re-upping restricted free agents Austin Reeves slash Rui Hachimura, plus getting much younger and lengthier by acquiring young guys with experience in Jackson Hayes and Cam Reddish, the Lakers' depth for 2023-24 is nuts. When you already have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, all you need is a bunch of really solid role players who aren't afraid of the moment to surround them. Rob Palenka is evidently well aware of that, based off what he's pulled off in the first few days of free agency, and he may not be done yet. LA's still very much in need of a stretch big whose floor spacing is both of high volume and efficient. That's why Christian Wood would be perfect for this team. The journeyman stint with the Dallas Mavericks didn't pan out, but he'd fill the Lakers' needs with his shooting chops at the five spot that could provide the perfect backup minutes for Anthony Davis. Speaking of the five spot, that's the biggest bit of good news for fans of the purple and gold in this video because you go out there and you snag the eighth overall pick from 2019's draft in Jackson Hayes, who was very much due for a change of scenery. The 6'11 Phenom has a 7'3 wingspan combined with thunderous athleticism and all he needs to be considered a viable option up front is to get a tad bit more of experience. He was buried in the rotation back in NOLA. The only just turned 23 year old Texas alum adds the very element that this Laker team had been lacking the very most, rebounding and reach. Boxing out Jokic in the conference finals was a nightmare, and while Hayes won't be able to individually even slow down a guy like Joker's production, he can help keep the other Laker bigs fresh by pitching in on the backboards with his energy and length. Additionally, look for Michigan State product Max Christie, aka Young Kobe, to take a massive step forward in his sophomore campaign. The kid is just mobile and fundamentally sound. Christie gives you solid perimeter defense as well, and providing that in addition to Max to a higher degree is Jared Vanderbilt, who is extremely perceptive and passionate when it comes to locking up opposing wings. Don't undervalue the fact that with Vando in the lineup, of course post-trade deadline, Los Angeles was 18-8. and eight. This man Jared can get it done for you defensively in terms of slowing, even in some cases shutting down any given team's best player. LA fans also have to appreciate the fact that Reeves and D'Lo both re-signed on fairly affordable deals. D'Angelo you get for just under $19 million per year over two campaigns, while Reeves you get for an average of $14 million over four campaigns. It's still a decent cap hit, and money that's no joke whatsoever, but when you take into account Dylan Brooks got four years and 80 million from Houston, and LA got Reeves for 24 million less than that, you can see the Lakers did pretty damn well here. While the Lakers are the clear winners of free agency, it does suck to lose Lonnie Walker, who signed with the Brooklyn Nets. If you could look at a couple factors to pinpoint why it's been a five-star offseason for LA so far, it's the facts that they got both much younger and athletic. From incoming rookies Jalen Hood and Maxwell Lewis, in addition to Christie, Reddish, Hayes, Vando, Reeves, D'Lo, Rui, Vincent, and Prince, 84% of the Lakers under contract right now are under the age of 30. The only two that aren't are LeBron and AD. But given James and Davis have so much combined experience as being all NBA players, that aforementioned rotation isn't reliant on too many veterans. That said, guys like Torian, D'Angelo, and Jared are young with a ton of pro experience. It's really unbelievable in hindsight though, how much better the Lakers roster has become since a year ago at this time. Since that initial acquisition of Rui Hachimura around the deadline, who's re-upped on a three-year $51 million deal this offseason, things have gone from looking like a bottom-feeding lineup aside from AD and LeBron, to a team that potentially even has too much depth, if that makes sense, aside from AD and LeBron. I think this is going to be a Laker team that wins at least 50 games next year and puts themselves right back in the spot they were in this most recent playoffs, facing either a Denver or Golden State in the 2024 Conference Finals. Getting through the Wild West would make them the favorite in the finals, and I'd pick them to win it all, if LeBron and AD stay 100% healthy, of course. One thing you can't bet against, though, 
is James and Davis being as lethal of a duo this game has ever seen at their best. These beasts thrive off each other's playing styles and personas better than any one-two punch, and if they're peaking at the right time, it's over. With two conference finals appearances and a Larry O'Brien trophy already to their franchise name in this decade, LeBron's final season in the purple and gold was always going to require all hands on deck. The fact that LA made as big of a splash as they have is great to see from any NBA fan's perspective. It'd just be great to see the Lakers be competitive in the Kings second last year in the NBA. The work starts now for the likes of Reeves, Russell, Rui, and even the new guys in Hayes, Prince, and Vincent. Staying in a flow throughout what'll be as grueling of an 82 game marathon as it'll get will take being in the best possible physical condition. If the endless under 30 year old young legs can provide a backbone like stability, the Lakers will be in for a championship caliber season in 2024. This was D Flow, 